more testimonies about Yeshua. And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all peoples to myself. There are many testimonies that John collects about Yeshua. Among them, the one that stands out is that of John the Baptist, who spoke repeatedly about Yeshua and his work. He also emphasized the one who had commissioned him and indoctrinated him about Yeshua's mission. Those who heard Yeshua also gave testimonies about him. Some rejected him and others accepted him. But without a doubt, the greatest testimony comes from the Father, whose audible voice he spoke about his beloved Son. The testimony of John the Baptist, the humility of the witness, the origin of the testimony, the testimony of the crowd. This is a hard teaching. No man ever spoke like this man. The testimony of the Father, the testimony of John the Baptist, the bride belongs to the bridegroom, the, fr the friend who attends the, uh, the bridegroom waits and listens to for him and is full of joy when he hears the bridegroom's voice. That joy is mine and is now complete. The humility of the witness. I must become greater, I must become less. A dispute arose between John, John's disciples and the Jews about the purification of baptism. This, the disciples' minds, minds turned to Yeshua, who also baptized as John and whose fame was growing. John made it clear that it is God who decides the work of each one. Yeshua, he is the Christ. He is the husband. He must become greater. He is heavenly. It is above all. He speaks the words of God. He is filled with the Spirit of God. He is loved by his Father, from whom he has received everything. Whoever believes in him has eternal life. John the Baptist, he is sent before him. He is the friend of his husband. He must become less. He is earthly. He speaks earthly things. He is a witness from whom no one believes. Whoever listens to him is the voice that God is true. The origin of the testimony, and I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, The man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. John identified Yeshua as the one of whom he had said, The man who comes after me has surpassed me. He ever even announced his pre-existence, yet he repeatedly declared, I myself did not know him. How could John know that Yeshua was the expected Messiah? His parents had told him that his cousin was the Messiah, but John had never met Yeshua. It was God himself who told him who the Messiah was. Likewise, we listen to those who speak to us about Yeshua, but we can only recognize Him as our Savior through the conviction that the Holy Spirit instills in us. The important point is, will we accept or reject the, this conviction that the Spirit places in our minds? A testimony of the crowd. On hearing His words, some of the people said, Surely this man is the, pro the prophet as the people were divided because of Yeshua. This is a hard teaching. On hearing it, many of his disciples said, This is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? After the feeding of the 5,000, the crowd believed that Yeshua was the Messiah and wanted to make him king. The next day, while he was teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum, he spoke to them about the bread of life, awakening in them a desire to know more. But it seems that they did not want to hear deep spiritual truths. They wanted the king to lead them in their struggle against the Romans. They closed their minds and refused to follow Yeshua or to accept him as a soul regenerating and converting Messiah. When Yeshua was forsaken, he spoke to the twelve, giving them the opportunity to leave him too, if they so desired. The response reflects the feeling, the feelings of all of us who have found in Yeshua our Redeemer our liberator, our personal savior, Lord to whom shall we go? We have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. 
No man ever spoke like this man. The officers answered, No man ever spoke like this man. Like the twelve, there were others who were willing to accept Yeshua as the prophet. Some believed that he could be the Christ. However, they still had some doubts. Everyone was fascinated by his words. Even those who had been sent by the Sanhedrin to arrest Yeshua were unable to carry out the orders they had received. Disappointed, the members of the Sanhedrin attacked the officers and called them ignorant. Their argument was based on the fact that they themselves had not accepted him, but they were wrong. At least one of them believed, and Nicodemus did not miss the opportunity to defend Yeshua. Again, they failed in their arguments against Nicodemus. At least one prophet had come from Galilee. In any case, their plans to arrest Yeshua were frustrated. <coughs> the Father's testimony. He received honor and glory from God the Father when the voice came to him from the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. <coughs> and the Father who sent me has himself testified concerning me. You have never heard his voice, nor seen his, his form. Yeshua know three things about the Father. He had given him power to perform miracles. He had sent him in the world. He had given testimony of him. The first, the first audible testimony of the Father was the, at the baptism of Yeshua at the beginning of his ministry. Second to the small group who witnessed the transfiguration, these words were deeply engraved in their minds. The third and last was shortly before the crucifixion in response to Yeshua anguish request. To whom shall we go? Not from the teaching of Christ, his lessons of love and mercy, to the doctors of unbelief, the wickedness of the world. While the Savior was forsaken by many who, who had witnessed his wonderful works, Peter expressed the faith of the disciples toward the Christ. The very thought of losing his this anchor of their souls filled them with fear and pain. To be destitute of a savior was to be adrift on a dark, stormy sea.